Hello everybody, welcome back to Hardware Hackers. Today we have a Game Boy Advance uh, with no battery back. Uh, but that's not the reason I'm making this video. The reason I'm making this video is because this has no sound. And to prove that it does work, uh, we are just going to turn it on. Volume all the way up, no sound, right? Well, we can double check that again. We can honestly just look at it and say, look, there's no sound, but there's power. You know, there's the screen. Uh, so what's actually wrong with it? Well, first thing I'm going to do is try and solder on a new speaker. So here's what I'm going to do. Remove the batteries and chuck it to one side. Uh, get the tri wing screwdriver and we're just going to take this thing apart. Here we go, I'm going to throw that there. So we have our motherboard here. Obviously, there's uh, just cross heads one here, uh, one here, and just one here, which is absolutely fine. I'm just going to throw that to the side, and we will eventually put them back. Now, shoulder buttons are the most annoying thing in the world for me. As you can see, that's uh, falling a bit apart. Now then, just unseat the ribbon. There we go, that's out as well. So we want this to basically come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just chuck this to one side as well. And I'm just going to fetch my PCB holder, which is just here. And this thing is really useful to me because it allows me to hold up PCBs, you know, without using crocodile clips like I used to, because um, I, I never really liked doing that. Uh, so, yeah, now I'm just going to, I'm just going to hold it like this. And just Turn this a little bit and fasten that like this and do the same on the other side. So I can turn this like that and then you can see, so we have the tech doctor to the rescue, as you can see I picked this up on eBay easy to find you just type it in um, they're literally just the same as a Game Boy Color and there you go really it's just exactly the same like if, if you look at it it's just exactly the same it just looks a little bit different because it's aftermarket but that's totally fine so I'm gonna leave that there magnetized because why not and all I'm gonna do is just unsolder this there we go Ooh. and 
here we go that's done very easy and now here comes the more annoying part but shouldn't be too much of an issue so all I'm going to do is just hold that up to it like that because it's already got solder on it yep pretty much and do the same on the other side so don't be afraid to sort of bend the wire into place just to get it to behave a little bit and the, uh, that one could do with a bit more heat Ooh, that's unsoldered Yep. So next thing what we're going to do, we're going to just seat this back into place and hopefully it should go snug. Just watch that ribbon cable and that switch obviously is getting a bit annoying. there we go and that ribbon cable needs to come back out obviously and then we can just seat that back in like so so before we do anything I just want to uh, I know this isn't exactly nice but what I want to do is put some batteries in as it is and then we'll see if what I did was was okay or not never mind the screws they can go back in a sec Yeah, that power switch isn't seating. Actually, no, it's it's these uh, little brackets that keep pissing me off. <laughs> yeah, the power switch has come out. That doesn't matter. That's what screwdrivers are for. Volume up. And no, that is not working, just my luck. So the speaker may actually well be fine. Uh, it might actually be another underlying condition that I am not aware of. So yeah, we will continue this video at another time. And until then, we will see. So further testing on the Game Boy, I made a little uh, USB 5 volt adapter that I just plug into a portable power bank that is just here. So I went with the multimeter on uh, the potentiometer just to be on the safe side because it works on the um, uh, headphone jack. Uh, so what might be the issue would be the potentiometer, but then again, I am not too sure because when I tested. Uh, from the ground pad to here I got like 0 0.2 volts here 0 0.2 volts here 0 0.2 volts here nothing on this one but on that one I got 2 volts so my guess is that uh, here going all across it's fine but that one is might you know might be a, a bit of a dead sort of pin resistor or whatever it looks like now nah, it looks more like a pin i don't know whether you can see i haven't got good lighting at the minute
Hello again and welcome back. Today we're just going to try giving a bit of isopropyl to the switch, trying to get it in the in the potentiometer hole. See if this will be a fix, because as I said before, the test results were very very weird. Uh, but then again, I've never really tested one of these before. So I'm just trying to get it in the wheel, trying to give it a little spin around and wait for that to dry and hopefully see where we get at. So I have a pair of really old batteries. Let's just see where we go. Not very well. So my last resort is to have the volume wheel turned up with a Q-tip inside while I just try and turn on if I can. The best way I can actually do this is if I use my phone stand and just... Okay, so that works. I don't know whether you heard that, 